Welcome to Our Town, a 30-minute podcast brought to you by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. This is Andy Ockershaus, and this is Our Town, and I am so delighted to have one of my very dearest, I wouldn't say oldest because he's really a lot younger than my group, but a very, very dear friend who I started in this business. I helped get him started on this business. He remembers when he worked as an intern for the guy that did Maryland football, Lenny Clumpus. And they told me about this kid for Clumpus, and, and he got a job as, a, as an intern or a worker here at WMAL, and he became the world-famous Tim Brand. Tim, welcome to our town. Andy, it is a pleasure to be here. How great this is. I mean, this brings back so many memories sitting here with you that it's it's incredible. Well, you know, in the, in the early days, and then, you, then of course, you went on to a huge stardom. But coming, a local boy, went to high school here. And incidentally, I've been around long enough, I knew your father quite well. And he worked for IBM, didn't he? IBM not? for almost 50 years. And, and he was a great years. athlete, incidentally, too. I, incidentally, to your to your audience, they don't know what a great guy your dad was. Well, we miss him every day, he and mom. But uh, we were just talking before we came on the air about my grandparents. <laughs> now, my dad's dad was a D.C. policeman. He used to have the sign that said, stop and go. <laughs> he was a cop. <laughs> he was a cop. And then my other grandfather, he owned the liquor store at 4th and K, and then he owned one down at the end of New Hampshire Avenue. <laughs> See, it's our town. Down at you the Watergate. I, I think my grandmother owned a tavern where they tell me the people, they didn't sell beer by the bottle. They'd bring in a little tin pan and fill it up with beer, and they'd take <laughs> it home. She had a place on 4th uh, and Street. And those South were West. the days. <laughs> But Tim, we're local and we love it, and and uh, you had an opportunity to go to a great high school here. Started you in your athletic career. You know, you were talking about some of the accolades that I've had, and I, and again, I we were talking about. I always say I feel like Forrest Gump. I don't know how <laughs> how some of this stuff happened, but it did. But when I look back at St. John's College High School, that was probably the greatest accomplishment. Is when I went into their Hall of Fame, their Athletic Hall of Fame. Because those were the guys, when I was a little kid, I looked up to all those guys that were playing at St. John's. Absolutely. And so many of those guys went on to not only great careers in college, but they went on to great careers here in Washington as as corporate leaders and leaders of the community. But Joe Gallagher was, was responsible for a lot of that, right? There's, there's a great a Hall of Famer. Man. He was my coach a in great football guy. and basketball and we're Who talking recruited about, you? Then you got recruited at Maryland, did you not? Well, I did. I, I actually verbally committed to play at Alabama. Is that right? I was being heavily recruited. Who was that, Paul Bryant? It was Paul Bear Bryant. And the pressure got so big and so <laughs> intense here because I had my brother Mike, who was two years older than me, he was playing at Maryland, and they were putting a lot of pressure on him. Can't you even get your brother to come here? <laughs> well, back then, as people know, Maryland used to play in so many homecomings, they took their own floats. I mean, they were terrible. So, <laughs> so it, there was so much pressure. So much pressure to stay. I, finally, I told my dad, I said, I mean, coaches were having fist fights in our living room. My mom's chasing them out with brooms. <laughs> and I said, I said, Dad, Recruiting. I said, Dad, I, I've had it. I'll, I'll go to Maryland. I don't care. He says, but if you do, you make that decision. You have to be a man and you have to call Coach Bryant. This is Paul Bryant. This is Coach Bear Tell Bryant. Tell me about it. It'd be so, frightening to hear the so name. My, yeah, so my heart is coming through my <laughs> chest. But I'll never forget this as long as that. You could barely understand him. He had a southern accent. I know. And he, and, he, and he kind of mumbled, spoken as deep. And I said, Coach, I've got some bad news. I'm not coming to Alabama. I'm going to the University of Maryland, where he had coached. Absolutely. I and know I said, that. and he's, I'll never forget this. He says, Jimmy. We're going to win more national championships at Alabama than you win games at Maryland. And he was he was, he was close. He Damn was man. close. He was close, he absolutely. Was. Now, you mentioned your one brother, but you're one of four boys. Four boys, no girls, survival of the fittest. We were raised just across the district line outside Northeast, right there uh, where it becomes Queens Chapel Road. Oh, uh, my. <laughs> so it was Northeast over to Queens Chapel right out to the University of Maryland. Not quite well. As a matter of fact, I remember the day when I was a little kid, the Queen had gone to the University of Maryland. I was there that to day. A, to a game Tommy against North Mont Carolina. Was exactly. And and they came right up Queens Chapel Road. My mother says, hey, the Queen's come. I said, the Queen? Who's the Queen? <laughs> queen of England. So we went down, and she was in a convertible, and she came by, and she went. She was went some, to the giant store. Yeah, there she did, right Chapel down Road. at the bottom of the hill. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, I remember the – Timmy, I have so many different wonderful times, memories. Different but times. But I know your career at Maryland. And did, did, how many of your brothers – only one of your brothers played at Maryland? And that's right. Mike played at Maryland. I played at Maryland. Uh, I was Jerry Claiborne's first defensive captain, and, and there – uh, then there was Pat. Pat went. He started his career at Xavier, and he was in love with his high school sweetheart, so he transferred back to Maryland. So he eventually came back to Maryland and played baseball. 
And then my youngest brother, Dennis, went down to eastern Kentucky and played baseball, Ohio Valley. All the boys did something, Valley. right? Yeah. Well, that's if good breeding from your dad. He well, it was good. Old. Again, it goes back to that. When we were all four of us in a room this, about this size and bunk beds on both sides of the wall. <laughs> it was, I'm telling you, survival of the fittest, but it was great. My mom used to say, hey, listen, boys, you can fight in this house, but if you go outside that door and somebody picks on one of you, he picks on all four of you. <laughs> and that's exactly he's a war. A, four four Irish kids yeah. walking down the street. That's Michael, Timothy, story. Patrick, and Dennis. See, there's a lot more to Tim Brandt. That's what we're talking about. People that saw you all those years on network and on local and everything, they knew you as an as a as a sports star, but they didn't know about the Tim Brandt underneath all that. You paid the price to get where you are. Well, there's no question. And again, it comes back to you. You gave me the opportunity and kind of mentored me all the way through. You were my champion, very much like Rune Arledge was at ABC Sports. And um, well, we were just talking. These were some of the happiest days I ever had in my life. I was just starting out, just learning. And you Tim. had such a cast of of quality journalists in here, Ed Meyer and, and, and Bud and all Writers. those guys. Writers. I mean, they just they, didn't they, read the they, news. They Len made Diver, the news. They did. They, and they were, you're right, they were great writers. They used to tell me radio is like talking to a blind person. You have to paint the picture for them. And it, and it, it helped my career all the way through. Well, Tim, and, and you know, one of the things that was prideful of our guys is they, they wouldn't read a commercial. They'd sell a product. Right. And right. that made a big difference. Harden and Weaver were great examples of that. Oh, They'd make it up. Harden and Weaver, I mean, the the media has changed so much. It's almost embarrassing now. But Harden and Weaver, their whole job, you talk about talent. They were talented. But their their job, they just wanted to put a smile on your face as you went to work in the morning. It was like listening to family. And Absolutely. they would they would say there was not a bad word or a bad thought that came out of their minds. Everything was positive. It was uplifting. They dominated the ratings. And it was a happy time. I mean, people would put them on and, and WMA would dominated the ratings but it was it was real to them that was the the listeners were their family it was so much quality and one of the great things that happened to you and happened to me was an opportunity to broadcast a heavyweight championship fight a local radio station with the world's greatest muhammad ali you know i've been very fortunate to do a lot of great things uh in sports on the air uh but that was the first big thing you said tim you're doing the fight I said, what fight? He said, Muhammad Ali, Alfredo Evangelista out of the Capitol Center. That was the Capitol Center back then, and it was it was incredible. It was incredible. That's where you really had to paint the picture. I went out. I spent the week with uh, the champ out in the, the Sheridan out there the in greatest. Landover. He was tremendous. He and Bundini Brown opened up their suite, had me up there every day. I became like their pet. <laughs> <laughs> I was their mascot. But they, what, a, what an opportunity for a young man to be next to the greatest. There will never be another Ali because the world's changed a lot. But you did the fight. Remember, you wore a tuxedo. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm trying to think of the woman's name you had because we had to time everything with a stopwatch for commercials oh, and absolutely. everything else. And I, I forget who you had sitting next to me doing that. But Eileen Griffin? I don't know. But I, Ali comes into the corner and Alfredo Evangelista hits him and blood squirts out of his nose and comes down and hits her. She said, that's all. She dropped the watch, got up and left. I never I never saw her the rest of the broadcast. <laughs> that was your first. And then you were a young reporter just getting started in the business. I mean, what a great opportunity. You did a great job. It was a world famous event for us. It'll probably n it never happen after that and it'll never happen again. It, radio doesn't do like it used to do. No, it was I great. grew up was, with Friday Night Fights, listened to it on the radio. It was huge. Don I mean, Dunphy. Uh, the, the Sweet Science. I, yeah. I, it and was so big at the time. You made a huge mistake, and I told you you were making a mistake, to leave WML to go into television with Channel 7, which now, was that our was as, That was as hard for me as it was to call Coach Bear Bryant. I, mean, I walked into your office, and my heart was pounding, and I said, <laughs> now this is the guy that gave me my chance, my start, my first job. And I'm sitting there, and my heart's pounding, and I said, Andy got some bad news he says what is it Timmy I said I'm leaving radio and I'm going to television I've got an opportunity to go to television and he says Timmy worst mistake of your life you'll end up in Louisville fast forward Absolutely a true story fast forward four years <laughs> I called Andy I said Andy Timmy he says where are you I said I'm in Louisville he says what are you doing there I said wide world of sports I'm doing the Kentucky Derby on ABC <laughs> How about that? That is absolutely a true story, Tim. I, I never regretted telling you that because that's what I felt. But then your success has been unbelievable. Because reading your bio now, the names that you work with have been incredible. The history of sports television is you. I've, I've been blessed. When you look, that's exactly right. I, I Again, it goes back, how did this happen? Well, I admired these guys watching ABC Sports back in the day, and there was no cable. 
So <laughs> you only got ABC Sports, NBC, or CBS. ABC had Wide World of Sports, which I was tremendously intrigued with. They had Chris Shankle, Keith Jackson, Jim McKay, Frank Gifford. These were guys I grew up watching. And I just, I'll never forget, I wrote Rune Arledge a letter and I said, Dear Rune, <laughs> being brash as I am, <laughs> totally not? naive, I said, Dear Rune, I'd love to come and work at ABC Sports and work with the likes of Keith Jackson, Howard Cosell, Frank Gifford. He writes this very nice, polite letter back. Dear Mr. Brandt, thank you very much for your letter, but you need experience to come to New York. This is a true story. I write him back a handwritten note, and I said, Dear Mr. Arledge, you can give a guy experience. You can't give him talent. I've got talent. I want to come to New York. He writes back a nice little note on a piece of ABC note paper. Just said, if you're ever in New York, stop by and see us. So my wife and I packed up that night <laughs> and drove to Manhattan. <laughs> went by 1330 Avenue. True story. 1330 Avenue in the America. <laughs> went upstairs. Back then, back then, I mean, you didn't think of these things. And it it wasn't was like, like an oracle. You couldn't go to your computer or email yeah. or whatever. So I walk in and I, I, I find my way up. I said, Rune Arledge's office, I've got an appointment, I said. Because <laughs> he did say stop by and yes, see him. he did. So I walk in and the secretary's there and I said, uh, is uh, Mr. Arledge in? And she said, no, he just left for Europe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, was going, he was going over a wide world of sports. So they did introduce me around ABC Sports. I met Chuck Howard, the guy who eventually hired me, Kirk Gowdy Jr. Um, those guys eventually hired me. But then they said, can you come back after lunch and meet with us again? I said, absolutely. I said, but I've got an appointment over at NBC, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> which I didn't. But I, I, went over, I found out where NBC was. I went over to NBC, and there was a guy there by the name of Rex Lardner. And so I went in, I saw Rex Lardner, told him what the deal was. I said, I'm here to see ABC, but I've always wanted to work for NBC. Oh, good man. So, so, he, so he, he, put up, he put up with me for about an hour. I went back to ABC. and They didn't give me a job that day, but they told me, you know, start knocking on doors. And, and you know, you don't have to go to the small markets to start if you're talented. You know, so I came back here and, and I was fortunate enough, you know, to get a job after this over at Channel 7 and Joe Albritton had just bought Channel 7 that's right. JLA that's Joe L Albritton because it was WML television TV, and radio right. so I went over there and worked at WJLA he says I want you to be my sports director I said but I've never been on television before he says no but you've been on radio just do what you do on radio it's pretty good <laughs> so I did well, so they I knew did. your career and I went over there for you a couple of years you were not unheard known no then I went over there for a couple of years got some television experience well I want to get and into that's your when television I, that's when I went now. to ABC but this is uh, Our Town with Tim Brandt and Andy Ockertausen. And my wife is not here helping me, Tim, but you and I are going to wing it alone. We'll be right back. Hi, Tony Sybil here to tell everybody about our wonderful restaurants at Washington Harbor. Tony and Joe's, the best seafood in the city. Nick's Riverside Grill, wonderful chops and steaks, wonderful views of the Kennedy Center, Roosevelt Island, the Roslyn Skyline, spectacular. Two bars outside, right on the water. Fabulous food. For dinner reservations, call 202-944-4545. It's really a great experience. We'll see you down at Tony and Joe's or Nick's Riverside Grill. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. Uh, this is Our Town, Andy Ockershausen. I'm talking with the... The great sports guy, Tim Brandt, who used to be a great radio guy, but didn't listen to me, which was so smart. <laughs> but you had some Olympic work, Tim, and then you came back and did basketball. You just remind me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I went to camp with Redskins, and that was, George Allen said almost the same thing. <laughs> he <laughs> says, you know, you're a great athlete, but we got to time you with a sundial. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of George, isn't that amazing? Unbelievable. Well, the, Unbelievable. The, yeah, well you probably knew Bruce and those guys oh, when yeah. you were growing up. Yeah. Well, I wasn't in camp that long, though. I mean, I went in and I, I mean, I when I went to camp, they had the over, they had just gotten the over the hill gang, and Myron Patios and those guys came in, and then they got Ron McDole was coming down from Buffalo, uh -huh. and so I'm in the locker room and I see all these fat, bald headed guys, and I, <laughs> I called Janet from the my Janet from Your the wife. yeah from the uh, locker room. I said, you know, I can make this team. These guys are all fat, bald guys. <laughs> we got on the field. It was incredible what they knew and how they did it. The brains were yeah. incredible. So right I was there? there long enough to get a cup of coffee, and and I was yeah, fortunate enough to run into you. Yeah, but Tim, you got your shot, and a lot of kids don't get that. Oh yeah, no, this it's, there's there's no some question great athletes about it. on Maryland that team. had turned the tide. They rec when they recruited me at Maryland, their pitch was because they knew I'd verbally commit to Alabama. Their pitch was, you can help change Maryland. 
And then this guy, Dim Montero, who was one of their recruiters and freshman coach, he said, where do you want to live when you get out of college? And I said, right here in the Washington, D.C. area. He goes, if you go to Maryland and make a name for yourself, it'll help you when you get out of college. And he was prophetic. He Absolutely. Was right. He was right on it. <clears throat> Tim, my years, remember, in Maryland were the Mojoletskis and great uh, years. the Bonks and the great teams. You know, Jim Tatum had them in the bowl, yep. the big bowl. Absolutely. They played for the national championship. They won a national and then championship cool in the 50s. Slip, but you brought it back. Your era began Well, I got out in 73, and it was the first non-losing season Maryland had had in a decade. That's and right, a long and then, time. And then 74, 75, 76, 77, they won the ACC championship. So I, I take great pride in that. Oh, he, that and, I helped and turn Claiburn was around. a great coach. Oh, I really liked him. He, I he loved did a radio him. show for him. WML. With me. <laughs> and I was scared to death. I had just finished playing for him. And he was, he was you know, he worked for Bear Bryant. And he was the Absolutely. same kind of guy. And and I was I was Southern afraid boy. of the guy. And you say, you got to call him Jerry. Because the first, the first show, I'm going, now coach? Now coach? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was scared. Well, Tim, tell me about your basketball now. I know you hit a big number when you got that ACC basketball contract. Well, I did. I, I tell you, ACC was, was great. I was with the network, you know, and as you mentioned, I had worked with uh, Keith Jackson. Worked. I was the first sideline guy on Monday Night Football with uh, Gifford and those guys. Worked the Pro Bowl, as a matter of fact, with Namath and and, uh, and, and those guys, Gifford. That was his first guys. and only Pro Bowl, wasn't it, as, yes. as an announcer? Yeah. Joe, he didn't make it in broadcasting. No, and as a matter of fact, he had just met his his I don't know with second wife, third wife, and she was they had just gotten married when we all showed up in in Honolulu, and uh, she was just the nicest woman in the world. <laughs> Joe Joe was a piece, and you know who else was the third member of that team was O.J. Simpson. It was O.J. and and Joe Namath and Gifford and myself, so four man team. Can but you believe that? It was it was <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, but I mean, Jim Nance worked with Jim Nance quite oh, a bit. Oh, I know, and he, he was very, very fond of you. He Jim. was very kind to me in his book. Great guy. Uh, and and Brent Musburger, Mike Tarico, you name them. I oh, worked with. You had them all. Yeah. I remember meeting Jim Nance. I met him several times at the. Um, at the Masters, he got that job. When Summerall got out of the Masters, he took his place. I said, I know Tim Brandt. Oh, he said, Tim Brandt is one of the, my dearest, dearest friends. He stood right up he, for you. And he still stays in touch. Um, he was in town whenever that tournament in. was at, at locally here a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Tigers tournament at a congressional. Congressional. And he, he came into town a day early. He says, let's go up to Burning Tree and play golf and catch up. You know, I mean, he's that kind of guy. Oh, he's a super, yeah. super guy. That's why he's so successful. Well, tell me about the basketball, though, Tim. I mean, that was big time. ACC, what was bigger than it? Well, Nothing. no, but see, when I first went to ABC Sports, there was no cable, as I said. So it was every game we did or every event we did was nationally televised. Um, so I, I did that for 30-some years. And then uh, the last 15, 20 years of my career was with the ACC. And those people were so good to me, so good to me. And as you know, I was born and raised in the ACC territory, so played in the you're... ACC, covered the ACC here. We'd go down to the tournament when I first started here, radio, and we'd on on radio WML we'd cover all the Absolutely. games, all the games. So so I would you know when Jimmy Rayburn who ran the ACC, he was another Rune Arledge, Andy Ockershausen right. who took me on his wing and said, "Come on, you're doing ACC." I said, "Okay." So I did that, and then my last game was this past March when I did the ACC championship here in Washington D.C. Oh, down, that's right, at downtown. the town. Yeah, the, it was, uh, Verizon Center, Virginia, Whatever North that's Carolina. Not so many names. And is I stole that... a line at the end of that that game, the championship game, from my old friend Mal Campbell. I said, "My time is up. I thank you <laughs> for, for yours. yours." And I rode into the sunset. Well, th you're not going to do any more. I'm done. I'm no, done. you're not. You I'm got done. too much talent, Tim. Why I'm would done. you waste it? Unless somebody wants me just to be an ambassador for something. Well, they might do that. Well, come on, all you well, major I'm sure corporations. I'm you to leave. You know what I love? Did you see that movie, The Intern, with Robert De Niro? Sixty-five-year-old <laughs> guy became an intern. Yeah, for, wasn't that great? That's that's what I want. Well, Tim, but you can't give up. I'll be anyway, your intern again. I'm not going to let you give up. This is our town with Tim Brandt. We'll be right back. Our town with Andy Ockershausen. Are you retired or soon will be? Is your will up to date? Don't want to leave a mess for your family to clean up. I'm attorney Mike Collins, the guy who sends you those invitations to my estate planning seminar. I'll teach you how to save taxes, avoid probate, protect your heirs from lawsuits, bankruptcy, even the divorce court. Keep your money and your family with our innovative Reservoir Trust. Watch the mail for your invitation. Tuition's free when you register online at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. You're listening to Our Town. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. This is Andy Ockershausen. This is Our Town. I'm talking to Tim Brandt. 
in your career starting out in Washington television, you had to be concerned about Glenn Brenner, George Michael, Warner Wolf. These were the big names in our town. I'll tell you a great and they story. Were Tim Brand. I'll tell you a great story. When when Joe Albritton hired me at Channel Seven from radio and said, just do what you do on radio. And I saw Glenn. Glenn was one of the funniest, nicest guys I ever met. True. We we became very good friends. But then George Michael came to Channel 4. He had all the video in the world. So one guy had humor. One guy had all the video. And I'm thinking, it's like a one-legged man <laughs> in a butt-kicking contest. And he had Warner. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, okay, what do I have? Well, I had athletic ability. I just finished playing. I was in great shape. So I started a series called Challenge Tim. And I batted against Bob Feller, and I fought Tommy Hearns, and I oh my raced God. cars with Paul Newman, and it was. I hope you saved all those tapes. Well, I don't. Know. Len Bias was a senior at Northwestern, and Lefty Drizel called me. He says, "Timmy, I'm trying to recruit this kid to Maryland. Can you make him one of your challenge teams? I'll go out there. This guy's a giant." <laughs> was, so they brought the whole. He went to Northwestern High School out in Hyattsville. I know that. So they story brought the whole well. school into the gym, and we played one on one, first to fifteen. Oh. It was a great. I beat the hell out of him physically. <laughs> it was, but he was such he a was great a player. Stick. But he beat me fifteen to eleven. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was just a great a show, great experience. Yeah, it and was a great show. He ended up going to your school. It was too. a great show, and he went to the University of Maryland, and the rest is history. Sad, Unfortunately, sad story. sad story. Lefty uh, was so important in a lot of ways to to our school, and I saw Lefty, he was up here for the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago. He's still a left hander. He used to get mad at me because we didn't pay him as much money as Dean Smith. He said, Dean Smith is making $200. I'm, I said, Dean Smith has won a championship, Lefty. You haven't won anything. He said, that's not important. He came in. He says, Maryland's going to be the UCLA of the and East. Was that great? Oh, it was great. And then they played Hail of the Chief when he'd come into Cole Fieldhouse, and he'd throw up his hands, and the place Stomping. would just go crazy. We, but Tim, how a, lucky we are to what we've had in our community. Oh, Think about so it. So listen to this. So my senior year, somebody said, hey. When you played at St. John's, you were an incredible defensive player, good player in basketball. Come on out. You can play for lefty. and, and when he'll Because at St. John's, Joe Gallagher used to use a box and one all the time. And we oh, were, that's right. We were playing guys like Austin Carr and Aubrey Nash and Dean Memminger. Big names. Yeah, huge names. Went on with Final Fours. So I said, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so they said, would you be the official timer at the game? So I sat down at the desk, <laughs> and I had this one suit. This one green suit. It just so happened Maryland was playing North Carolina Charlotte or somebody, and their colors were green. So I'm trying to work in these commercials, and I figure Bob Bodell was at the free throw line. So I said, heck with Bodell. I'm calling the time out here and get some commercials in. Lefty went crazy. I was like, I was icing a shooter. <laughs> so he came over, and all he knew is I had on a green suit, and he went crazy. Almost flipped the table up. He still laughs when we tell that story. Oh, Tim. And there'll never be another lefty either. No. The great characters that you've worked with. How about down the line then? The ACC, you had Coach K. You had a word concerned him. And G Love Mike. Love Dean Mike Krzyzewski. Just went down and visited with Mike. Mike does more for, for the people down in the Duke area. Raises more money for that hospital down He's at Duke. incredible. It is. It's it's. An, they just mentioned him, I think, in that 60-minute piece they did. They're, they're finding, they inserted polio in this woman's brain. She had a, a oh my malignant God. brain tumor, and the polio ate, ate the cancer. So they're making strides every day, every and, and day. He's been, well, you know, he still remembers his West Point days. Oh, Coach sure. Played for, <laughs> played for Bobby Knight. Is incredible? <laughs> it is incredible. And they remain friends all these years, too. But all those, all those people were so kind to me in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and to this day they still are. Raycom. Yeah. It was at Raycom Sports. But they, they still, most of those guys still contact me. I contact them. Just played golf with Tom O'Brien two weeks ago. Who's a, he was the head coach at NC State and football and Boston College. It just oh, yeah. Incredible. Tim, what about your, your West Coast uh, uh, sojourn with Keith Jackson? He was always Mr. West Coast. Well, that was me. the highlight of my whole career for me because Keith was one of those guys. I love him to this day. He's 87 now, believe it or not. Um but Keith, the last time I worked was with Keith was the 2002 National Championship game, Monday night primetime on ABC Sports, and it was uh, Nebraska and Miami. And that Miami oh, team, to this day, from my money, with has the greatest college football roster of all time. All those guys were first-round picks. Ah. I'm talking about Ed Reed, Clinton Portis, Jeremy Shockey. All of those guys were on that team. Um, it was 
And Nebraska always had good players. What did he call them? The horses or something? He'd call them. Well, the linemen, linemen were big uglies. The big the uglies big ugly. in the trenches. The mamas never liked that. <laughs> oh, but he was, he was unbelievable. One but time, Nebraska. One, one he time did a lot of Nebraska football. I remember well, that. Well, we, everything we did was a national telecast during the season. So we were doing Oklahoma, Nebraska, Alabama, ah. Auburn, the game of the week. You know, it was it was Army Navy. I mean, it was always the game of the week. It was phenomenal. But we're sitting there in a booth one day and we're doing a game, and a kid made a tackle who just came off the bench and he looked like he was 12 years old and Keith goes look at that face looks like he's 12 and he looks like he's just as happy as a speckled pup under a red wagon <laughs> we go to commercial break I said what the heck is a speckled pup under a red wagon he goes well down where I come from down in Georgia back in the day he says the ice truck he says it was red <laughs> and the dogs would follow it and be under it get trying to get the ice as it melted <laughs> and it's I'm a hot day I said all right he, he went a character now he's still alive, of course. He is. He? he is. He's living out in the. Way. He stopped traveling. He didn't like. He to lives travel. way up on the top of the hill, right off Mulholland Drive, oh, overlooking the city. Hollywood. Yeah, overlooking the city. But he he's gave a, it up because he didn't like. He's like Vin Scully. He didn't well, want to travel anymore. He retired about three times. We did that national championship game in 2002, and he was going to retire. So I said goodbye to him on the air, and what a thrill it's been, and thank you for the whole deal. He comes back next year and does a national championship with Dan Fouts. <laughs> Fouts, he goes through the whole thing. You know, hey, been great working with you, Keith. <laughs> then he comes I mean, back and he worked with him. It was unbelievable. You know, to be, to be with these guys for that much time and absorb their humor and absorb them as human beings, was a great experience. Well, it was, and 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 that humor I think helps you. I mean, they make fun of you, just just like in a pro locker room or something. It's all in good fun. But I mean, Keith used to say, "Timmy, you sure you play football? You're the only guy I know that can do ten straight chin ups and not touch the same chin twice." <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Your Nobody bath in his group, huh? your bathtub must have stretch oh marks." You know, God. but that stuff humbles you, and it, and it, it's it's fantastic. It's fantastic. but you know, Tim, you're dropping names like Joe Namath and. And OJ, I mean, people that Brent are Musburger. legends. No Brett Musburger gave me the Heisman. People say, gave you the Heisman? He handed you the trophy? What? No. When I started talking, he put his arm out to <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Musburger's still working, isn't he? He is. He's Musburger's still AC, working. Tariko's still working. Jim Nance's still working. A lot of those guys still working. So in that regard, you know, I, I think, okay, what am I going to do the rest of my life? So. As a matter of fact, I told you, I'm asking for your help. I'm the chairman of the, the Mercy <laughs> Health Clinic in Gaithersburg. And you never worked with Golf Cosell, tournament. did you? Oh, absolutely. We did the 1983 World Series together. Well, that's right. And he up in the booth doing was, baseball. Uh, up in the booth was Al Michaels, Earl Weaver, and Howard Cosell. The uh, sideline reporters, Reggie Jackson and Tim Brandt. Oh, my God. So, I mean. With the glory just, days. Yeah, just it's, it's phenomenal. I, I still think it was a dream. I'm going to wake up someday. No, no, Tim. Timmy, you did it. But, but I don't understand why you would let it happen that you walk away. You still got all the talent. You still love the job. Janet will let you go. <laughs> Tell, uh, how about our trips to Hawaii? You took me one time with you. Why didn't I do more? Remember the Aloha Bowl? Those were Bowl? good times, the Aloha Bowl, yeah. Oh, That was Tim. on Christmas Day, ABC Sports. It was uh, a great show. Your old friend Lenny Klomp has had it. He That's ran right. It. He um, ran the deal. We did it in the Aloha Stadium. That was that was tremendous. I did the Pro Bowl in Aloha Stadium, did the uh, the Aloha Bowl in Aloha Stadium. Those were great days. And you could take your family with you. On I those did. Trips. I took my family every year over to uh, Honolulu. We'd stay on Waikiki Beach. ABC would put us up in the uh, Pink Palace. <laughs> oh, that was great. The Royal Hawaiian <laughs> Hotel. Vividly. And uh, we would stay there, and it was great. Now, and then your... the game would end Christmas Day. We'd go straight to the airport and fly over to Maui, and we'd check in at the Ritz-Carlton in Maui and wait for our, our uh, NFL playoff assignment because I did the NFL with Hank Stram. So, Tim, you didn't miss anybody, no, did it was, you? it was great. Well, tell me about your girls. You had well, everybody's two daughters great. I've got, athletes, I've got two boys, two girls. Um, three kids are married. Um, one girl is is getting close to being married, oh. <laughs> um, and like I played. Uh, the boys golf. are older than the girls, right? Yes, I played golf yesterday with my youngest daughter's husband, and uh, he says, "You know, that's been." He says, "Today is their third wedding anniversary." Today is so. I said, uh, "Happy anniversary!" And he says, "How about the run you've had?" I said, "As what?" He says, "As my father-in-law." He says, "You have three grandchildren, a couple more on the way, <laughs> in three years." They don't know you're a good Catholic I said, boy. They I said, "Eventually, I'm going to tell those kids what's causing it." <laughs> and the boys are doing great. Boys are doing Kevin, great. Kevin, I know. How about this, Andy? Well, all, I remember all your four son kids. went to naps and didn't like it. Right, went remember to Maryland. That? I said, "Okay." Henry forgave I me. I told for him. That. I told him he could leave. Well, you remember who helped him? Absolutely. Strom, Strom Thurman. Thurman, yeah. And Duke. I know it. So 
He went up and and I said, but if you leave there, you've got to finish. Mar- he wanted to transfer to Maryland. I said, if you go to Maryland, you've got to finish in three years because you've wasted a year here, and uh, which really wasn't true. It no. taught him a great deal and and helped he him a lot. Learned a lot of discipline. Sure did. But uh, he went to Maryland, finished in three years. All four kids work for Fortune 500 companies now. Wow. And they own their own home. So I'm, I'm very, you know, we've been blessed. We've and, been blessed. And Daddy's very so rich. So now it's time to go out and help those that <laughs> don't have any. That's that why I'm it. doing the Mercy Health Clinic. Tim, there's no better satisfaction in the world than given because you get back. You know what? A thousand ways. Ancient Chinese philosopher once said there was a man, they called him mad. The more he gave, the more he had. It's better to give than receive. That's so true, Tim. I learned that many years ago from... Janice, my wife, of course, and Hardin Weaver and all the things we did at WML in the charity world, you know. We built this station on doing things for the community. Yeah, absolutely. And you're you know, an example of that. Well, I don't know about that, but this is this has been so much fun talking about all this because I, I normally don't talk about my career or any stuff. I always, in That's my speeches. That's why it's our town. People don't know about, Timmy, all the things you've done. In my speeches, I always say, the good Lord put eyes in front of your head and not in the rear to see where you're going and not where you've been. <laughs> so I don't look back a whole lot. He's local, too. Tim, this has been just delightful. I appreciate it, and and Janice would appreciate it if she was here, but she's busy. She said, "You, well, you two tell guys, her I love her. She tell said, her you I guys love her." Are over the hill, do your own thing. <laughs> Listen, Janice could be. She wouldn't have gotten a word in edgewise. <laughs> no, that's true. She'd been up there ordering. Though. But you tell but her Jimmy, I love her. Thank you so much. We didn't even talk much about our shipwreck friend, shipwreck Henry. Henry, I talked to. Well, you know, we we go back and forth. <laughs> oh, absolutely, all the time. Henry is. <laughs> he's going to come. He's going to do a show. He knows a lot about. Now, you our tell town. me he's not a Damon Runyon type character. Oh my God! You tell me he's not Washington D.C. Never DC. ever meet another one. I mean, just tell a story about shipwreck. I mean, I <laughs> how that came into existence. His, his, his call sign now is Shipwreck Henry at AOL.com. Where was he? Down on Vermont Avenue? Down in that area? Yes, he yeah. was. Absolutely. Yeah. Tim, thank Love you him. so much, and best to you. I, I don't see you're giving it up. It's, re, it's ridiculous. Well, you know, I love you, brother. You're the man and always will be, and thank you so much for being part of our town. And when we get this podcast up, we're going to let you know when it is. Well, thank It'll you be for everything all over you've done the world, for me. Tim. Thank you for everything you've done. You're for the me. best, baby. We yeah. love you. I love you. This has been Our Town with Andy Ockershausen and Tim Brand. You've been listening to Our Town Season 1 with your host, Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town podcast episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. We welcome your comments and suggestions on how you like the show or who you'd like to hear from next. Catch us on Facebook at Our Town DC or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C. for hosting our podcasts.